Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide and servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa Brian Post. Hope everyone is having a wonderful Wednesday. Sometimes I forget the day of the week. And I uh, hope you've been having a really good week. It's hump day, right? And it's almost evening for most of you. And it's night time for some of you. And it's morning time for others of you because it is coast to coast, all around the world, with Big Papa Post. So um, today I thought we'd talk a little bit about the chaos of spanking. It, a uh, little scenario came up with one of my family coaches working in a home with a grandfather raising his two grandsons, and I will say that I think he's just really stressed because he got really upset with her because... The coach, who obviously is following a post-parenting model, a love-based model, and felt like she's letting the boys get away with too much and she needs to be using the paint stick. This is what he what he threatens his uh, his grandsons with. And got really stressed, got really stressed with her escalated voice, etc. And uh, threatening, you know, threatening to fire her and not allow her to come back if she was not willing to make them do what they needed to do the way he does it. And she said, I because I called her, and she said he could not hear that I'm still getting the end result. I'm still getting them to do what it is I need them to do without having to hit them or without having to yell at them or without having to threaten them. And so I thought, you know, and I and I, talk, I talk about this in all my lectures, you know, the definition of discipline is to teach, not to punish. That if you want, if you want to be an effective disciple, then you want your your students to have clear thinking and effective short-term memory. Just talked about that the other night. But, um, you know, then I think about, you know, of course, the Bible, spare the rod, spoil the child. That's usually a common a common default for for some parents, and um, my belief is that that's a that's a misconception that spare the rod the you know, rod and the staff are used in the raising of sheep. The rod is used to guide the sheep, and the staff is used to pull them back in line when they stray. Used by the shepherd, the rod is not used to beat the sheep with because if the shepherd beats his sheep then they're going to stray. So spare the rod, spoil the child means spare a child guidance and they will be spoiled to the ways of the world. Well, Proverbs also says, raise up a child until they are mature. Raise up a child until they are mature and then they will not depart from it. So guidance, raising, discipline is a process. It is a process and we are so conditioned Primarily generationally, and I know this grandfather. I've spent time with him. He's read the book, and you know we've had we've had many evenings of discourse about how to connect to these two traumatized grandchildren that he's raising. But I know that when she told me the way he had behaved, the first thing I thought is he's really stressed because, and it probably has nothing to do with those boys at all. And so then I asked her, I said, you know, how is he how is he finding out that they're not doing things exactly when you want them to do? And she's like, I don't know. He just comes home and if if one little boy has gotten into the tools and the tools not put back the right way it is it's supposed to be, then he just flips his lid, yada yada. 
And I said, okay, well, uh, you know, I'm sure he's really stressed. But then it made me think about when talking to you guys that, um, you know, spanking is some, it's such a, it's such a tradition. It is something that is just passed down from generation to the next generation. And then I think, I think about all the families who are stressed and this is not applicable to that particular grandfather because he's, he's, he's the, the COVID-19 stuff hasn't affected him at all. In fact, he's driving more. He's a truck driver. He's driving more now during this time and, and, uh, than he was previous. So it's not that, but I know some families, there's going to be a lot, a lot of additional stress for them, a lot of additional stress for the adults. And the thing is, is when you become stressed, you go back to those old blueprints, your brainstem opens up, your experiences of how you were parented start to turn on and become activated. And then John Bowlby said, in the father of attachment said, you know, in the 1950s and 60s, that you parent the way, well, he said, actually, you mother the way you were mothered. And I always took that to mean you were parent, you parent the way you were parented. And so you could be the most loving parent in the world and then become really stressed and then revert back to old behaviors, spanking being one of them. And the significance to that for me is that when you are stressed, and you stop thinking clearly and your short-term memory stops activating, is no longer online, and you have blueprints that tell you that hitting is acceptable, and not only acceptable, but it, it achieves an outcome, then you start to perpetuate on your children. And what you don't realize is that the act of spanking a child actually causes them stress. So if they're behaving in a way that's deserving of a spanking or a whipping, and then all of a sudden you spank them, you spank them, then they're already experiencing stress to get to the place to where they were to be misbehaving. And then when you spank them or hit them, you're actually increasing the stress. And so in, in some situations in the short term, it may cease the behavior. But in the long term, and literally by, by within an hour or two hours or for sure the next day, the child has, because of the stress, has now even a bigger challenge towards appropriate behavior. Because they were already stressed and then you've compounded the stress with the hitting. And now the person who's supposed to be their source of regulation and security is now theoretically and technically a threat because that adult hits the child, so the child feels threatened. So then the child doesn't get the regulatory interaction with the adult that they need to turn on their oxytocin, and they are yet left more helpless. And so then I go back and I say, if you spare a child guidance, they will be spoiled to the ways of the world. And I always think about sheep who are afraid of their shepherd. When the sheep become afraid of the shepherd, they stray. And then they are spoiled to the ways of the world, which means essentially they are eaten by the wolves and the coyotes. So then I hear things coming from kids like, I don't want to live here anymore, or I don't want to be adopted anymore, or I'm scared of him, or I, I, I don't feel safe. A stressed out parent cannot hear that communication because then what happens in the brain of the stressed out parent, those statements, those emotional statements become greater threats for the parent, which creates more stress, which then creates more confused and distorted thinking, more short term memory, and then more chaotic behavior from the parent towards the child, which in essence creates more chaos, spanking comes from a place of internal chaos. Spanking comes from a place of internal chaos. And the internal chaos it's coming from is in your brainstem and it's in your cellular system. You've probably got serious blueprints of stress and fear that arise from your own history growing up. And I saw a quote the other day um, that 
you know, we say that we, we can raise our children the same way we were raised. And that's another way parents used to justify hitting their children. But the reality is, is our world is different now than the world that we grew up in. And, and it's sad. It's sad because the world we grew up in was one that really didn't even require spanking. But that's what our parents used because it's the only thing they knew. The world that many of us grew up in was uh, pretty calm compared to the chaos that we live in now. So now you fast forward, you know, 30 years per se, and you've not only got children dealing with the same amounts of trauma, you have parents dealing with the traumas that they've come from. Now we live in a, we live in a society that is mired in trauma, and then we continue to use old practices and old methods to try to change current behaviors. And it just makes it more challenging. It is, it is almost setting you up. It is setting you up for future failure with your child. Because the more you spank your child, and, and a lot of parents start really young, and I always say to parents, you can use, you can spank your child while they're young. You can spank a traumatized, a traumatized child while they're young. But what you're doing all along the way is you're sowing the seeds for them to perceive you as a threat and for you to lose the relationship. And so with a traumatized, with a biological child, you might be able to get away with it even up until they're maybe 13 or 14. But with a traumatized child, you're pretty much going to start losing by the time they hit pre-adolescence. Because if that's their experience with you all the time growing up, it's just reinforced the trauma that they already showed up in your life with. And it makes them have that, that much less trust for adults who are supposed to be the people protecting them and taking care of them. And for those other families where it doesn't surface by 14... It's going to surface. It's going to surface in adolescence. And then what happens is your children start to look for love and acceptance because they attract, because your brainstem attracts, always looks for similar vibration. Your child starts to look for love and acceptance through children who have a similar dysregulated vibration as they do because those kids, the kids they find, are also the kids who've been rejected and haven't felt good enough and ha essentially feel cast out. So then they all get together, and then what do they try to do? They try to self-soothe. And when they try to self-soothe, what does that usually lead to? Drinking, cigarettes, sex, stealing, acting out, stealing cars, driving fast, all that kind of stuff. And then what does that do for the parent? stresses them out even more and ensues the negative feedback loop. The parent becomes more stressed, more chaotic. And so I really want to encourage you to think about what are the seeds you are sowing when you are using physical force with your child. And that probably seems kind of basic for something that I talk about, but it still shows up and we still have it. And I was just listening to a statistic earlier this afternoon that says that, well, I can't remember, but for every, I'm going to, I'm going to misquote it, but essentially the unemployment rate is going to lead to more deaths than COVID-19. And so the higher the unemployment rate, the more deaths occur because there's more stress. That's a whole different level of stress. And so when you're using physical force in your parenting, remember you may have a short, a very short-term victory in getting your child to stop doing that thing in the moment. But in the long term, in the long run, it's going to make your relationship really, really difficult. So I hope that's helpful and I hope that gives some insights 
Remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from our same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, or we can stop, we can slow down, take three to ten deep breaths, and choose love. Hope you guys will choose love. Tomorrow, is it tomorrow? Yep, tomorrow we're going to be doing a webinar with Jeanette Yoff. Talk about trauma-informed parenting practices. Uh, we think we posted that on Facebook page. And then um, I've got another guest. I was a guest on another uh, parenting series. I need to send that out so you guys can have access to that too. So if nothing else, I've been talking up a storm to a whole lot of people during all this process. God bless you. Big Papa loves you. You guys have a fantastic evening. And I'll see you tomorrow. Join us live on weekdays at 6 time on Facebook at the Post Institute. Don't forget to get your copy of Brian's best-selling book, From Fear to Love, on promotion. Just pay shipping and handling at www.feartolovebook.com. That's www.feartolovebook.com.